Today, I'll show you how to make this scrappy, quilt-as-you-go, patriotic table runner. It's really fast and easy to whip up, a great stash buster project, and I'll show you how to do it next. What's up, YouTube? Now, I got this idea off of Pinterest, and it came from a website called Felt Magnet, and I thought it was so cool that I'd show you how it's done. Now, I'm going to be using a red, white, and blue theme here, because 4th of July is Tuesday, but you can use any color combo that you want, and this is a great stash buster. So the things that you're going to need to make this patriotic table runner are some red, white, and blue fabric, now these all measure two and a half by 12 inches long. So I have six different prints here in each color, and I cut three strips each. That gives me about 54 strips of fabric. Now the tutorial that I saw recommended about 50 pieces of fabric. That way you have enough for a scrappy binding also. And she went ahead and cut her fabric anywhere from one and a half to three inches. I just wanted to make it a little bit easier, so I just did all two and a half inches. You're also going to need a square of fabric for the center of our table runner. I chose this kind of flag motif here. It has red stripes, white stripes, with blue stars in it. And I think it will coordinate well with all these strips. This just happens to measure four and a half inches squared. The tutorial that I saw, she went ahead and did four inches squared. You can also just go ahead and cut a square out of your red, white, or blue fabric and use that for the center also. You're also going to need some backing and some batting. And this just happens to measure 15 inches by 37 inches. After we get this table runner all done, I'll trim it down. So the finished size is going to be 14 inches by 36 inches. You're also going to need your iron and ironing board and your sewing machine with coordinating thread. And I'm just going to go ahead and use this neutral kind of creamy color. So let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is find the center of your batting here. So to do that, I'm just going to fold it in half, just like that, and make a mark. This happens to be a disappearing marker. I'm going to open it back up and fold it in half the other way and make a mark. When I open it back up, I don't know how well you can see on the camera here, but this is my center point. Now you just want to set this off to the side for just a minute. Grab your backing piece, and we're going to lay that so the pre-side is facing down. Smooth it out as much as possible. You want to make sure that this is nice and ironed and any creases or wrinkles are out of your fabric. Now just take your batting piece, and we're just going to lay that right over top of our backing, and smooth that out. At this point, if you have some spray base, it'll be a good idea to go ahead and spray base your batting down to your backing, just to make sure nothing moves on you. But I'm out of spray base right now. Next, you're going to take your square piece, and we're going to line it up with our center mark right here. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. You can measure if you want. And we're going to lay it so it makes a diamond. Just like that. So now I'm just going to take some pins here. And I'm going to put them on three of the sides here just to keep it in place. Just like that. And I went through all three layers. So now I'm just going to take one of my strips, I'll start with this blue one here, and the side where I did not put my pin is where we're going to put this blue strip. So for the first few strips here, we're going to have to measure and cut. I know this is four and a half inches right here, so I'm going to take my first strip, I'm going to cut it to four and a half inches long. Now save this extra piece of strip here, because we may be able to use it later on in this table runner. So now I'm going to lay this strip, pretty sides touching, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and throw a pin in there. 
Now I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine and using a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm going to sew this strip down. I'm going to start two to three stitches before the strip and stop two to three stitches after the strip. All right guys, so I have my first strip sewed on here. So now I'm just going to go back through here and clip the threads on the front and the back. So now I'm just going to fold this strip over and give it a good finger press. And now I'm just going to take my iron and carefully iron this seam. Now this batting happens to be 80% cotton, 20% polyester, so you really don't want to hit it with your iron or it will melt. But once this gets larger, it will be no problem. So now I'm just going to continue putting strips on in a clockwise manner. So my next seam is going to be right here. So I'm just going to take my ruler here, measure that seam. It's six and a half inches. Now I'm going to take one of my fabrics at random. I'll choose this white one. And I'm going to cut that down to six and a half inches. So now I'm just going to remove this pin, place this white piece pretty sides together, and then stick my pin in there and sew it down. All right, guys, so I have my second strip sewed on here. So like before, I'm just going to clip my threads on the front and the back. Now just go ahead and finger press this strip over. Now you just want to grab another strip here. This time I think I'll do red. And this side right here happens to measure six and a half inches also. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this red strip down to six and a half inches. I'm just going to lay this with pretty sides touching. Place my pin. And sew it down. Now I'll continue to do that until all of this is filled up. Now it's a good idea to audition your fabric to make sure that's where you want it before you sew it down. This is going to be totally scrappy and random when I'm finished and it's way easier to change the fabric now than later on when it's already soaked down. Alright guys, so I have a few more strips sewed on here and I brought you back to show you this next part. This red strip is going to go right here and as you can see when I put it on here there's going to be a little overhang. That's perfectly okay. What you want to do is line up this corner with this corner. So I'm going to put the pretty sides facing. I'm going to sew this piece down. And when I open it up, there's going to be a little bit of overhang. That's fine. We'll just cut that off later. The important part is to get it lined up right here. So I just stuck a couple pins here, and I'm going to sew it on just like the rest of these strips. If I didn't mention it before, I'm using a straight stitch, and my length is a 2. Alright guys, I have all my strips sewed on here. And for these corner pieces, those little chunks that we hacked off in the beginning that I said to save, work perfect. So now what you want to do is give this a good press, front and back. Now flip it over and do the back also. Alright guys, so now you just want to trim this down to size. You can trim this any size that you want to fit your table. And I'm going to settle for 36 inches. Now my grid here happens to be 36 inches wide, so that's just perfect. So the first thing I'm going to do is square off the sides here. So to do that, I'm going to make sure that I have some extra hanging off of both sides of my mat here. And I'm going to roughly kind of line up the bottom here with a line on my grid. Now I will be taking some off the sides here, but I just want to make sure that it's nice and square. So now just take your ruler and your rotary cutter and cut it off.
And now I'll just trim up the sides. To make this a little easier, I'm just going to turn my mat around the long way. So now I'm just going to line up one of these lines of my ruler with my straight edge. My goal is to make this about 14 inches wide. If it's a little less or a little more, I'm not too worried about it. You just want to make sure if there's any of the batting or the backing showing through that that gets cut off. Now I'm just going to move my ruler up with the other straight edge and continue my cut. Alright guys, now we just want to do the other side here. Now when I measure the width here, taking an account of where my batting and backing is showing through, this is only going to be 13 and a half inches wide. That's fine with me. So now I'm just going to line up my line here on my grid at the bottom. I'm going to line up my ruler on the side with my grid and cut off this side also. Alright guys, now it should look like this. Now the next thing that we're going to do is our binding. So you just want to set this off to the side for just one moment and grab your extra strips. So now what you want to do is grab one strip. I'm going to start with this red one right here. You want to grab another strip. I'm going to choose this white one. And we're going to lay these so that this edge matches right here and the top edge of the red strip matches right here. Just like that. And if you want to, put a pin. Now we're just going to take this over to our sewing machine, and we're going to sew from this corner all the way over to this corner of the red. Just like that. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Alright guys, so I sewed from this corner of the white to this corner of the red. Now I'm just going to clip the extra little dog ear off here, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. And when you open it up, you can see you have one continuous two and a half inch strip. Now I'm just going to take a blue piece and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to match up the top edge with the side of the white and the top edge of the white with the side of the blue. I'm going to stick a pin in there. And I'm going to sew from corner to corner. Just like that. Now clip off your dog ear, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to continue to do that until I have enough binding to go all the way around my table runner. Alright guys, so I have my binding strip all sewed together. And I ended up sewing 12 strips. So the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and fold this in half. Just like that. And we're going to give this a press, the whole length of this strip. Alright guys, so I have my binding strip all pressed in half, and I like to start on the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of my table runner here. And we're going to want to leave a 12 inch opening here so we can attach our binding ends together. So I'm going to stick a pin right here. and then 12 inches down from there, which will be right here. And when we start our binding, you want to leave a good 8 inch to even a 12 inch tail. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine. I'm going to start right here where this pin is. I'm going to back stitch, and I'm going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance attaching my binding all the way around. When I get to this pin, I'm going to stop and back stitch. And when you cut your binding, you want to overlap your tail, but I'll show you that when we get to it. Now when I get to this corner, I'm going to stop about a quarter inch away from the corner. And then I'm just going to sew off at a 45 degree angle 
and break my threads. Now I'm just going to stick a pin here for demonstration purposes. So we'll just pretend that I sewed right up to this corner and sewed off. Now you just want to pull your binding back so that this raw edge is even with this raw edge and then fold it over just like that. Now you should have a little flap here. That's exactly what you want. We'll start right here where we stopped and keep on sewing and we'll do that to all four corners. So I'll take you over to the sewing machine and show you how it's done. All right guys, so like I said, I'm gonna be using a quarter inch seam allowance and I'm gonna back stitch here in the beginning and just sew on your binding. All right guys, so I'm about a quarter inch away from the corner here. So I stopped with my needle down. I'm gonna raise my presser foot and I'm going to spin my project. Now my corner is right here in front of me and I'm just going to sew right off the project. That's a 45 degree angle. Now just cut your thread. So I don't know how well you can see this here on my sewing machine, but now I'm going to fold back my binding so that my binding raw edge here is even with this raw edge of my table runner. And then I'm gonna fold it forward. Just like that, so you have this little flap here. Now I'm just gonna continue sewing, starting right here, and sew the rest of my binding on. Alright, so I reached my second corner, and I'm going to do the same thing. My needle's down, I'm going to raise my presser foot, spin my project so that the point is right here facing me, and then just sew off. Now break your thread. Now I'm going to pull my binding back so that this raw edge is in line with the raw edge of my table runner here. You can kind of just stick your thumb there and then fold your binding over. Just like that. Now sew it on. Now I'm going to continue to sew on the rest of this binding, and I'll show you what to do next. Alright guys, so I stopped right here where my other pin was, and like I said, I left a 12 inch opening right here. So you can see you have these two flaps here. So now what we're going to do is attach our two bindings. Now if I attach it right here at the end of this blue one, there's only going to be a little chunk of white. So I'm going to actually cut this blue one down just a little bit. like about that much. So now I'm just going to overlap this white piece over the blue two and a half inches. And snip it off. Just like that. So if you can see here, here is my blue and here's the end. And I overlapped the white one two and a half inches. Now you just want to open up your white piece, just like that, with the point facing up. And now we're going to take our blue piece with the point facing down, and we're going to line it up, just like we did when we attached it. So the top here of the white piece is going to match up with the side of the blue, and the top piece of the blue piece will match up with the side of the white. And definitely stick a pin or two. 
So now just like before when we attach our strips of binding, I'm going to sew corner to corner and that will give us the perfect amount of binding to finish off our table runner. So it should look just like this. Now I'm going to clip leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. And you can see when we open up our table runner here, we have the perfect amount of binding. So now you just want to take this back over to your sewing machine and close this little gap, making sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Alright guys, so now you just want to flip your table runner over and kind of push the binding to the front. Alright guys, so now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I'll be using a zigzag stitch to stitch this down. You could use a straight stitch if you wanted to, but if you use a zigzag stitch, it hides any mistakes you made. So what I like to do is fold this over just past the stitch line we just made. And with that zigzag stitch, I like to line up the edge of my binding with the middle of my presser foot. That way I zig onto the binding and zag just off onto the table runner all the way down. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. So when we get to our corner here, we're going to fold our binding straight off, making a little triangle, just like that. We're then going to fold this end over, just like that, and it makes a nice, pretty, mitered corner. So then all you'll have to do is come around with your zigzag, stop, pivot, and continue to sew. I'll take you over to the sewing machine and show you how it's done. Alright guys, so I switched my sewing machine to a zigzag stitch. My length is still a 2 and my width is a 3. Like I said, I'll line up the edge of my binding with the middle of my presser foot. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end. And just keep sewing. Alright guys, so I'm coming up on my corner here. So I'm just going to lay my binding flat off the project, just like that, making a little triangle. I'm then going to fold up the other end, just like that, making a mitered corner, and just keep sewing. Now I like to take a stitch or two onto the fold of that mitered corner. I stop with my needle down, raise my presser foot, and spin. Now continue to sew. Alright guys, now doesn't that look great? This will be the perfect thing to spruce up your table this 4th of July. And like I said, you don't have to do red, white, and blue. You can do any colors that you want. It's a great stash buster project. I hope you give this project a try. If you like this project and want to see more of my projects, go down below and hit the big red subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up. If you have a question about this video or any of my other videos, or would just like to leave a suggestion for a future upcoming video, leave me a comment. Feel free to share this video across your social media. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay safe this 4th of July, and I'll see you next time.